So physically choosing a dairy cow from a herd involves a careful assessment of various visuals and tactile cues to identify cows that are likely to be the best fit for your dairy operation. When selecting a dairy cow in person, here is what to look for. Number one, the general health of the cow. Begin by observing the overall health of the cows or the cow that you are interested in. Look for signs of alertness, bright eyes, clean nostrils, and a well-groomed coat. Healthy cows are more likely to be productive and have fewer health issues. Number two, body conformation. Assess the cow's body conformation. A well-conformed dairy cow typically has a straight and level top line, that is the back. A deep, well-rounded barrel indicating humble room for digestion. Balanced proportions, with body parts like the head, the neck, and shoulders are in, 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 in harmony. Straight and sturdy legs that are not too long or too short. Hooves in good conditions with proper trimming to prevent lameness. Well, I know maybe you have not understood this, but later on, after this, we are going to look at this body conformation in more details so that you understand. Another thing number three you look at is the udder structure. Examine the udder carefully as it plays a pivotal role in milk production. This is where milk comes from. Look for four evenly sized quarters, uniform texture and suppleness of harder skin. Good harder attachment to the body, ensuring stability. Teats of appropriate length, thickness and shape that are easy to handle. Again, as I said earlier, about the body conformation and the other structure, since these are the most profound physical attributes that you look for in a cow, later on after this uh, summary, we will look at those two in more details with appropriate diagrams so that you understand it better. So please, don't, uh, don't quit. Stay tuned until the end, and then we will come back and look at the two in more details. Number four, milk production records. Review the cow's milk production records if available. Data on daily yields and lactation patterns can provide insight into her productivity. So make sure to ask for this data. Ask from the farm office, the farm manager, or whoever is taking you around. That if it is kind, they will be kind enough to provide you with such data so that you can really analyze them. Number five, look at the cow's temperament. Observe the cow's temperament. Look for cows that are calm and docile. Aggressive or overly nervous cows can be challenging to handle and may experience more stress-related health issues. So stay off from them. Number six, reproductive history. Again, ask for information on the cow's reproductive history, including calving intervals and conception rates. Cows that regularly conceive and calf at appropriate intervals are often better choices. So don't forget to look at such records. The other health. Check for sign of other health, such as lumps, swelling, or any indication of mastitis. A healthy herder is essential for quality milk production. Number eight, the diet and nutrition. Inquire about the cow's diet and nutrition. And in some cases, even you can see them preparing the feeds if you are in, on the farm. See what they include, how they balance the diet. Since a well-balanced diet contributes to overall health and milk production. Cows with appropriate body condition score are often in good nutritional health. Record keeping. Request access to the cow's health and treatment records, if they are available. Understanding a medical history can help you gauge our overall health and potential issues. Number 10, interaction. If possible, interact with the cow and observe her behavior. 
not a response to handling and human interactions. Cows with a cooperative temperament are easier to work with and manage. Number 11, pedigree and genetics. If pedigree and genetics information is available, consider a cow's lineage. Strong genetic backgrounds can indicate potential for high milk production. So, when selecting a dairy cow from a herd, it's important to have a clear understanding of your specific goals and priorities for your dairy operation. Whether you prioritize high milk production, overall health, or other factors, these visuals and tactile assessments combined with data and records can help you make informed choices that align with your objective. But since I promised you we are going to look at the, the, the two, which is the body conformation and the other, actually sometimes another word for this is the physical traits. Let's look at the physical traits of a dairy cow so that you can be better placed to understand and to choose the right dairy cow for your dairy operations. One of the first things that people look at when they look at the, 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 the physical traits of a dairy cow is the dairy strength. So let's start at looking at the dairy strength. And you can see from the pictures that I'll be showing you, so follow carefully so that at least you understand them and you'll be better informed. Now, a cow that excels in dairy strength will have a feminine head, a long, lean neck. It will have sharp and angular withers, a long barrel, a lot of space between our ribs. You can even use your fingers. At least two or uh, more fingers going in between the ribs is better. Ribs that are flat in shape, they should not be round. A flat, not round conformation in the part of our legs between the hooks and you close as you can see from the diagrams. Wide through the chest floor. Deep in the fore and rear ribs. Long in the ribs, that is the barrel region. Very wide through the ribs. Loft of spring of rib. Now let's look at the opposite of that. That is a cow that lacks dairy strength. May have they will have short and coarse head. They will have a short, thick neck, round withers, a short barrel, little space between our ribs, as uh, had we had uh, demonstrated earlier. They will also have round ribs. They will have round lower legs, narrow between the front legs, that is a narrow chest. It will also be shallow in the fore and the rear ribs, short in the rib, barrel region, narrow through the ribs, that is slab-sided, as you can see from the diagram. Now, let's look at the front feet and legs. A cow with correct front feet and legs will have hooves which point straight forward, as you can see. Straight front legs which set square with our body. Now the opposite of that, which is a cow which, a cow which is not correct in the front feet and legs, may have hooves with toes that turn in or out, as you can see. Crooked front legs. As you can see them. Now let's look at the rear feet and legs. A cow with correct rear feet and legs will have hind mm -hmm. legs that are placed squarely underneath her when she stands, as uh, demonstrated on the diagram. A moderate set curve to her hooks. It will also have clean hooks, clean hooks, sorry, short, strong pastance, a deep heel, a steep foot angle, straight hind legs when viewed from the rear, as you can see, an easy smooth stride when she walks, like the one demonstrated there. Now, how about the opposite of what we don't want now? A cow with incorrect rear feet and legs may have hind legs that attach too far back on the ramp. 
Sometimes that is called the thal placement too far back. Secondly, it will have too much set to the hooks, sickle hooked or hooks that are too straight post legged swelling or puffness in the hooks, weak pastens, heels that are too shallow, a low foot angle, hooks that are in when viewed from the rear. Sometimes we say the cow is hooked, a restricted and comfortable stride as they walk. So be careful to look for those. Now, let's look at the other conformation now. This is the factory where the milk is produced and it's very important that you concentrate there and you get it right. You don't want to take home a cow that has problem in the herd. Now let's dive in. A cow which excels in other conformation will have the, the following traits. Now let's look at them one by one. An other that is appropriate in size and capacity relative to the cow's age and number of lactation. A moderately, a moderately long for udder that blends well into the body walls, as you can see. A level harder flow, with the harder flow well above the hooks. A full and wide rear udder, as you can see. Also, a high and wide rear udder attachment. It will have balanced quarters, Evidence of a, of a strong median suspensory ligament. A lot of veining in the harder is very good. Teats which are moderate in size and length, squarely placed under the quarters and perpendicular to the ground. Yeah, so if you see most of those traits are there, then you are good to go. Please, when you see such things, these are red flags. A bulgy for harder, a, bul uh, a harder that is bulgy is not good. A loose for harder attachment, the attachment is very loose. There is also too much slope to the harder flow or reverse tilt to the other flow. You should avoid those. An other flow below the hooks, that is a no. A flat and narrow rear harder. A low and narrow rear harder attachment also is not good. Look at the quarters. If they are unbalanced, they are not good. A weak median suspensory ligament. Teats that are not the correct size or shape. Front teats that are too wide. Front teats that strut out. Rear teats that are too close. So if you see any of these, please keep off. Now, let's look at the frame. The frame is very simple. You can see it from any angle. A cow which is correct in a frame will be tall, long from a muzzle to a pins. It will be straight in our lines, balanced and smoothly put together. Long and wide in a ramp with a moderate amount of slope from the hooks to the pins. If you see a cow that has a such a frame, then you are good to go. But let's look at the opposite which is not what we are looking for. A cow which is not correct in a frame may be low set, as you can see from the diagram. It is short from a muzzle to a pins. It is sway, is sway backed, rough at the shoulders, steep slope from the hooks to the pin, reverse tilted in the ramp with the pins being higher than the hooks, narrow in the hooks, thals and pins. Yeah, you see that, you keep off from it. Whether you see it from any angle, it can be seen. So as you can see, those are the things we should look for. Those are the physical traits that you should look for. And if you have any of that, then you are good to go. I think that's all. I think at least now you are better placed to choose a, a, a good dairy cow just by looking at it and considering the factors that we had earlier looked at, that were the, you have to look at the general health, the milk production record, its temperament, reproductive history, its diet and nutrition, how it, it interacts, 
Also from the record you can know its pedigree and genetics and its lineage. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please don't forget to subscribe for, so that you can be alerted on more videos on farming. Thank you very much. See you next time. Yeah.